Welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast. I'm Conrad Francis, and as you already know, we are going through our top five episodes to honour the last hundred that we did. This one that I'm introducing is how to improve the quality of your sleep. We did drink whiskey th- during this episode, so that proved to be a very interesting one. And I'd like to thank the fact that with that episode, my sleep patterns have changed. Anyway, enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast, where six mates unpack three topics over a new drink each week. Fuck it. Just go with that. We'll fix it if it's... Welcome to the Simple Minds Podcast. What are you looking at me for? I'm, I'm welcoming you, on. Conrad. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks, Michael. So, Conrad is obviously here. <laughs> and right. at the table for a change. Yeah. <laughs> Out on the broken chair. Matt. Opposite Conrad, how are you? I'm well, thank you, Mike. Hi, nice to be here. I'll miss our special guest just now. I will come back to him. Travis. Hey, hey. And Jacob. Afternoon. And we are missing, obviously, Marco, who will now be missing forever. <laughs> it's somewhere in Mexico. He's supposed to be in London. I, know, I, don't know what's going on. <laughs> I didn't understand that. <laughs> and Marco, uh, love Just, you. Justin, as well, who is somewhere in, Spain. in Europe. Spain. Is Spain, is he? When does, he, when does he actually do his talk thing? He's, he's I thought he was over there for a conference, but he seems to be eating and drinking and touristing. <laughs> like. he's, he's off to a conference now. Okay, cool. They can, <laughs> they can adjust that. <laughs> yeah. Shall we introduce our uh, special guest for the day? I was getting to Michael that. Duncan. Thank you very much. Someone, someone's had some coffee. <laughs> Martin, how are you? Great, thanks. Uh, pleasure to be here. Yeah, you have actually listened to a few of our podcasts. I have. I've been listening to uh, since uh, probably about April, May time. Yeah, you, yeah. You've got to come closer. Yeah. So Martin, how, how do you pronounce your last name? McPhillamy. McPhillamy. Yeah, so... McPhillamy up. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so I've had that a lot of times. Um, He's never heard that. It's a, a, every, every, McDonald's every, new burger. <laughs> everything, everything that you can think of, people have called me, and my nickname in school was McGibbly because people couldn't, <laughs> couldn't announce it. And that's Martin, 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 Martin McFibbly. <laughs> that's a great name. So uh, where's it, where's it come from? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm English, but the um, the name itself is actually part Scottish and part Irish. So which part? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mick. The, Mick part. <laughs> the Mick, I'm guessing, is Scottish, and the the, the filmy is Irish. I'm not 100 percent sure, but that's what I've been told. Could have been lied to. <laughs> could have been. Could have been. Um, you're, but you're one of the brekkie crew. You come. You've actually am, yeah. joined joined us on our breakfasts. Which yeah. Has been great. How did you come through months. there? That was through Jason King. Yeah, it was. Um, so, uh, I mean, I met Jason probably about two years ago. Uh, Has he apologised yet? <laughs> <laughs> um, through, through a group of friends, and me and Jacob, uh, Jacob, sorry, Jacob, uh, Jason were obviously being English, we hit off quite, quite well. We're, we're you both, guys understand each other. We're both into, yeah, <laughs> we, we understand each other. We're both into, like, you know, going out partying and having a, having a laugh. So we met each other through that sort of thing, but then we decided to start meeting up and having a few, a few you know, breakfasts together and decided that we were, you know, we were on a similar journey of self-development. I just started mine at the time. And uh, after a, a, you know, four or five meetups, he goes, oh, you know, I've got a little this group, and it was all about self-development and you know, helping each other out and being supportive and you know, develop, developing each other and challenging each other. I was like, you know, that's really at the point I'm, where I am in my life right now, and I'd really appreciate that. You know, I get yeah. involved and uh, been trying to come to Challenging as being account. a very, very well, give us, state word for being well, brash and fucking say, rude. Since, <laughs> since, Je- since uh, Jason was the guy that introduced you, in one minute, tell us who you are. <laughs> Um, so I am by uh, business. I'm a respiratory and sleep scientist. I studied originally at uh, Nottingham Trent University in the UK. Um, I did a sport and exercise uh, degree. From there, I went on to do a research master's, uh, and that research master's was actually in uh, mainly involved in respiratory physiology. So I was looking at uh, how how you could improve the the respiratory muscles to improve exercise uh, and recovery from exercise. I also do, I dravelled in a bit of uh, nutrition, uh, looking at supplementation in, in uh, elite, elite performance and elite sports and seeing how you can improve uh, performance there. But then, because uh, my, my research was involved in respiratory, after that I tried to get into a bit of uh, sp- sports work. However, following that, I, I, you know, I found it pretty tough. So I decided that it'd be more rewarding to go into clinical duties and cl- clinical work. So then I went and uh, worked in a hospital for three years and trained as a respiratory and sleep scientist. And then at the end of that, I decided that I wanted to go to the, what would be the best place in the world to, to study yeah. sleep, which is Australia. <laughs> They're the pioneers of, uh, of CPAP machines. Which, oh, uh, is that because we are the biggest issues with sleep here? Is that, is that one of the reasons? or we just Res, Resmed uh, are, the, are the company who uh, basically uh, pioneered CPAP machines, so to treat sleep apnea. And uh, I decided that 
one of my friends back at home, his dad always said, if you want to go to, if you want to study, you want to go to the best university in the world. So he said that to his son. His son went to New Zealand to study rugby union. Yep. So he played rugby union. He is <laughs> okay. now an in 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 England international. So oh, I thought, wow, fantastic. Wow. Yeah. So he's okay. he's 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 that journey, and I thought to myself, if I if I'm a, you know, working in CPAP and, and helping people with uh, with sleep disorders, then I'd come to Australia where it's pioneered. Yeah, very good. Um, I am hosting, but I did not bring the drink. Martin, you brought the drink. Do you want to go through? what it is and a bit of a story behind it? Yeah, there is. Um, I think he's tasted on the way in, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's not much left. <laughs> yeah, so it's the, the Belvini single malt scotch. It's a, a single barrel sherry cask, 15 years. Uh, the funny story behind this, I say no, it's not funny really, on my journey of self-development, I started doing a, a challenge set by uh, Jorben Har- Harbinger. You guys heard of him? Yeah. Jorben Harbinger? Yeah, um, the Jorben Harbinger show, so the Art of Charm podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so he's, he was one of the, uh, the, the hosts of that. And he set a challenge to people to s- spend 30 days just giving out value. It had to be genuine, but spend 30 days giving out as much value as you can to anybody. Help, help them out, smile, give them, give them, you know, compliment them. Whatever you see, you can, you can give. I, I did. But that was without expectation. So that's where I started giving without expectation. And on the very first day I did that, one of my friends said to me, um, no, I'm struggling, I'm trying to get back to fit again, I'm trying to get back into basketball. Um, would you mind helping me out with my training? So I went, yeah, of course, Will. Went out and just gave, gave him a, a, designed him a, a training program to help him get him, you know, lose a bit of weight, help with his sleep, everything like that. And uh, the next day, he popped around my house and he said, oh, I've got a bottle of whiskey for you. I was like, what's that for? It's like, well, you helped me out yesterday. Well, there's no need for that. You're one of my friends. But, <laughs> so it just showed the reward of get, giving without. He became a better friend. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A friend that gives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So no expectation. That's Cheers. It. Cheers. Salute. Cheers, lads. Don't break the glasses. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very deep colour, isn't it? Watch the mm. microphone. Very deep. <laughs> Cheers. Jeez. Sorry, Jeez. Conrad, I missed you. You missed me a lot, Fred. I actually think I get, I'm meeting Jordan in a couple of months. I think he's coming down for the uh, a podcast oh, um, okay. event. That put hairs on my chest. <laughs> which, will be, which will be cool. He's, uh, yeah, That's nice. I've listened mm-hmm. to a lot of his work. He's very good uh, with, with social networking. Very and, multi, and, not Peter. You know, collaborating and... and giving out value. I think he originally was in the uh, um, kind of relationships industry. But then he moved from from that and went is more into uh, human dynamics now, and how to help performance and help business and human dynamics. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's out of charge, people. Well, where are we going with this? Yeah, where are we going with this? Well, First of whiskey. All, it's not bad. What did you say, Conrad? Peaty. I reckon it's malty. It's not as peaty. Malty. Mm, chewing the fat you have. <laughs> I probably got it wrong, but anyway, that's. I can't get the chassis moving in here though, unfortunately. <laughs> I guess uh, the, the reason why I, I kind of wanted to be on the podcast, I've been wanting to come on for a little while. Well, the host should have introduced you while you're here. Yeah, yeah. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not listening to your comments. <laughs> why, have you, why have you wanted Martin on the show? Well, because he's part of our crew. I'm, I'm breaking but what do you want him to speak about? Um, sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, well, Martin set down a challenge last week. We, yep. Well, we into because I mean he's he's one of the crew and we wanted to wanted them to come on the podcast and he was very proactive in jumping on and telling us what we need to do for the whole week. So we've all been off caffeine this week. Off caffeine and off watching. Well, any electronic oh, devices. Electronic before, devices be, for an hour before we sleep. Yeah, any technology before an hour before you go to bed. Basically. But, but have we caffeine? I have TV. Eh. I was largely really? off caffeine. I was largely off caffeine. You were, large, you were largely all over caffeine. We had <laughs> breakfast yesterday. I, and, I, hey, what are you drinking there, Conrad? Oh, English <laughs> breakfast tea. What's it full of? Oh, caffeine. Oops. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Oh, is it, when it's darker, does that mean it's got more caffeine? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Up until yesterday morning, I was largely off caffeine. I had green tea and oolong tea and whatever. Do you think that was a slip of mind, like memory? For sure. Or, Any yeah. Red Bulls or? Don't, no, bullshit. Uh, no, no, no. no, no, no. no, no I'm going to mention it because. <laughs> Fuck that. Uh, <laughs> sleep, sleep is vital for every physiological uh, component in the body. And one of the first things that you will t- start to lose when you're sleep deprived is, is your memory. So. And I have been largely sleep deprived this week because yep. I've been working on a lot of stuff. Um, forgetting that tea has caffeine in it. 
is a long bow to pull at. Sorry, is, it, is, <laughs> is, it's a long in, in the terms of memory, is it short-term memory or long-term memory or just memory in general? The first thing would be what's called executive memory. Yep. So that's being able to bring up a, 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 something that you've learned recently whilst you're doing something that you'd already be doing. So, for example, yep. if you were sat down having a conversation with a friend that you're trying to inform them and you would order a, cof- a cup of tea, yep. that would be <laughs> executive memory. Um, or it could be just a habit. Yeah, obviously habit, habit as well. <laughs> definitely, definitely habit as well. But it's the the way it can affect the brain is uh, you've got a pre pre cortical context, and as you <laughs> can you say that again exactly the pre what <laughs> pre 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 cortical complex oh the part okay. of the brain and basically that's where your memory is processed. Yeah, when you lose sleep, you basically your the neurons that were in that part of the brain are not firing properly. So you're not able to, to recall those memories. You're not able to, to use that brain as appropriately as you would be able to or as efficiently as you would be able to. And what's the brain actually doing then while we're asleep? What's the, the process? Is it kind of just rejigging itself and sort of getting reset or is it? So there's uh, f- four stages of sleep. There's non-REM and there's REM sleep. So there's rapid eye movement and, and non-rapid eye movement. And within there you've got in non-REM movement, you've got three stages. Light sleep is which is level one, and then you've got deep earth sleep, level two, and then there's deep slow wave sleep, which is level three. Within deep slow wave level sleep is where your, your memories consolidate. So that is where your brain is getting, it's actually more active, so it's actually kind of like filing your memories as you do oh, that. Wow. Okay. When you go into REM sleep, that's actually where you're learning your motor skills. So as you're you know, going out and learning new skills or for example in, in Jacob with, with your company where you're, you're learn, teaching people handstands if they're lacking sleep their ability to, to go away and process that and learn those motor skills is going to be severely impaired by getting poor, you know, poor sleep quality or, or deprived sleep yeah makes sense <coughs> that's why uh, Conrad wasn't able to learn it <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many hours do you get Conrad? <clears throat> on average yeah, these yeah. days five yeah four to five I mean, I, I was, I survived years on two to three. Yeah. With sleep apnea. No, I, I reckon I've only, I've only been diagnosed as, a, as having sleep apnea as recently as last year. Okay, I snored when I was sleeping and I stopped breathing when I was sleeping and you know, it is what it is for me. But I, I have had a test. I do now wear a mask. I do know the difference. So it's not real until you're diagnosed? <laughs> this isn't a Conrad Francis <laughs> no. pick-on episode. No, no, no. Right? I'm just just curious because that's, like that's you, it was a really short window, right? As well, what? you probably I'd argue. What's you, a really short window? You probably have slept over a period of time the least out of everyone in this room. One hundred percent. But not only were you having the shortest window of sleep, you actually had well, shit quality. The yeah, yeah, had really shit quality, quality too, which is yeah. what I was getting at. So that. That was quite a small amount of sleep, I'm thinking. Well, yeah, huge. I mean, it's, it's all about sleep duration, but it's also about the quality of sleep you get in. If you're not getting that quality of sleep, it's the same as having a lack of sleep duration. And you're probably not even getting into the deep, deep sleep, are you? Or you maybe do for like... So the way the, way the brain works is uh, essentially when you're, when you're lacking sleep, it will try and... Uh, that deep, non uh, level three, slow wave sleep, it will try and keep that. So your brain is kind of protecting that part because that's the most vital part of sleep. That's what is going to be restoring the body and consolidating those memories. It's also the part that looks after the brain as well. So originally, when you start to deprive of sleep, you'll lose stage one, two in REM sleep. Oh, will go straight to... Okay. Yeah, so, but you'll keep the majority of your slow-wave sleep. Yeah. However, when you can catch up on your sleep, you would only then usually get a small amount of REM sleep back. Well, what, okay. what, so we're, we're talking about sleep in the traditional sense of the word sleep, right? And biphasic sleep patterns. Yeah. Okay. Now, I've, I've become aware over the years of um, a, you know an elite mindset where polyphasic sleep patterns have served, you know, namely Kobe Bryant. Kobe has a polyphasic sleep cycle. So and like short, sort of. Yeah, more frequent, shorter day, sleeps. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, there is no in, in Spain. They have the the, the common. Uh, siesta, siesta in the afternoon, yeah. Siesta. And, there and I used to do that. I used to take an afternoon siesta uh, wherever I could. Um, I tend to not need to do it anymore. Yeah. Um, but that's maybe because I'm getting a better quality sleep. But there are a variety of sleep patterns. And I, I, mean, I guess I hate being pigeonholed into what and how I should sleep when I, when I give myself the permission to sleep whenever I need to sleep. That's understandable. Understandable. And I think... 
we've had a little discussion before about sleep and and, and you, how you don't feel it. Yep. it. It doesn't serve your purpose to sleep longer hours. Mm. Like, could you, you know, wh- why do you think that is? I, I'm, yeah, I get the quality of sleep. I understand the contribution that that could have to a way of life. I get that. Um, I guess I value my input during my waking hours to chase the pursuit of what I'm trying to achieve more than sleeping. Um, and I've come to terms with um, being okay with where my happiness sits. Now, I'm happy without sleep if it means I'm doing things on purpose towards my purpose. And I'm okay with that. No, I'm, I'm grossly okay with that, probably ridiculously okay with but that. Even with possible long-term... I'm not here for a long life. I'm here for a great life. I'm, my, 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 I'm not about length. I'm about quality of life. Now, I get that. I understand where you guys are coming from and I'll always challenge that because if I die tomorrow, I know what the fuck I've done. If you go to the, uh, the 2080 rule, yep, 80% of your productivity, 80% of your yep. work is done within 20% of the time. If you are able to improve that quality yep. by increasing your sleep duration, yep. which it potentially would, yep. that's going to be a benefit for you. Hey, I can... I can, I can I can show you my journey over the last eight months, nine yeah. months that I've been on my sleep apnea machine yeah. and the amount of stuff I've been able to achieve without a doubt, the my quality, but my hours haven't really achieved. So the quality has. Yeah. So would, would it be a, a chance now to maybe even test it out for three months or so and try and get that six minimum like hours of sleep and not, because I tend to think you do wear it as a little bit of a badge, this sleep thing, I work all the time and do whatever, but like to actually use it as a, like purely as a as a test to see if as martin said your productivity during the day if you get six hours sleep you could suddenly find like during the day you're like powering it like, yeah great no just to give it a test no why, because why because if i'm okay with who i am and what i'm doing okay and I've, and I've got enough people around me that can carry that load if they need to carry it why do i need another extra hour of sleep when i can spend an extra hour consuming content and, and pushing myself doing what i want to do You've got a reasonable argument, and uh, I, I actually was reflecting on this when we spoke about it last time. I was kind of thinking, when it comes, if your if your purpose is more quality, so it's down to qualitative value rather than mm. over and or quantitative. If it's quantitative, then you can put, you know, okay, go out and just do hours. If it's about meeting people and it's about getting out networking, then reduce your sleep. But if you're looking for quality, for example, you're. You know, you're Michael and Matt here, who are, you know, they would need to be creative and need to have high quality within their work. Then you're going to get more of that. It's going to be more more appropriate having longer. Yeah, I think we could play the the creative game with Marco. When Marco was here and and producing shit, he was creative and he wasn't sleeping. Oh yeah, I, don't don't get me wrong. I'm not disrespecting yeah. the science, okay. But sometimes it's a give, right? And sometimes you've got to spend to make. And I spend my sleeping time to make quality time other other ways contributing. And I'm okay with that. You know, I'm not taking that out on anybody and I'm not angry at anybody. I'm not saying, well, shit, I wish I wasn't doing that. You know, I'm not grappling with lack of sleep. What's the recommended number and what do you perceive in your experience to be a, a good either number or one or two other factors that come into it that are just must, must-haves to give you that quality? The recommended is, is seven, to hour, seven to nine hours. So that so is eight. Yeah, <laughs> but, but there is a small variance between individuals, but it's only very small. And what? So can we just go around the table? Who has what average? Let's go. That's, that's what I'm about to do. Yeah, Maddie. <laughs> well, this week. <laughs> no, no, on average six, six. Trav, uh, six and a half to seven. Really? I thought you were at eight. No, um, I operate on in looks. I, I no, no, I can. If I'm under six or around six for a long time, I really feel the negative effects. Like if I'm six and a half to seven consecutively, I'm fine. I can operate at my peak. What sort of effects? When you say negative effects, do you actually just, like during the day, you just... Yeah, like, just get tired by the end of the day. The end of the week mainly is, yeah. you know, that Friday I'm really... But you give yourself permission to then catch up, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. You'll just zone off, you'll switch off, you'll yeah. do whatever you want to do, yeah? Yeah. That's an interesting point. Do you ever do a catch-up day, Conrad, where you like, just like I mean, sleep for 48 hours or something? Sure, like sure. Okay, so... When, I, when, I'm, when I'm batting through the way I do, it'll get to a time where I will just switch off for 24 hours or a weekend. I will just... Hang upside down. I won't cave. sleep. I, won't, I probably won't sleep for that time, but I will just slow the fuck down. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you meditate? Yeah, every day, twice. How, how often? 
How long? What should I bet? Ten minutes? Fifteen minutes? Because med- meditation, in a way, you know, is is it's allowing you to have similar processes mm. of sleep. Well, this is why I go back to polyphasic sleep patterns yeah. because I believe I'm in that space where I'm okay with a polyphasic sleep pattern. But you don't. I'm not okay with a biphasic sleep pattern. You don't polyphasic sleep, do you? Sure, I do, mate. I, if I give myself permission to nap in the afternoon, I meditate twice a day and I sleep once. I think I mean, polyphasic though is like every two hours you have twenty minutes. Sure enough. Full. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So I may be not as structured with my sleep patterns, but I get the rest I need. Yep. Clearly, I get the rest I need. My output isn't fucking affected. What for what you for what you feel and what you think? Yeah, but you know, the studies suggest that from su- sub- subjective sleep uh, sleepiness, for yep. example, people get to do psychomet- psychometric vigilance tests. Yep, and there's no correlation between subjective sleepiness and their ability to perform cognitive, cognitive performance okay. tests. So pe- people actually say to themselves, "I feel okay," but it's equivalent of, of you know having a bit of a drink and going, oh, "I'll be all right to drive." Is that that ability to, to be able to actually be aware of how you're feeling is lost through lack of sleep. If you get what I mean. Yeah. That's the story people want to tell themselves. Jacob. Jacob. Yeah. What you do you do, mate? You six, seven, eight, nine, you're about okay. it. Um, seven to eight. And I guard that quite quite ferociously. And that's that's interesting because we, we, we did a, a, a test to, to check for daytime sleepiness and Jacob, you actually scored the highest. So... <laughs> 19, no, he's a fucking koala, mate. That's why. <laughs> yeah, what, but what about having a one-year-old child as well? Does that? Yeah. How does it's, that impact? It's it? when I get six to seven that I'll be drowsy and sleepy, and kind of my body will make up for it. Um, and probably in the last month, when I've been having to wake up a couple of times a night, like the quality has been less. Like I'm quite a heavy sleeper, and, and for the first eleven months of Henry's life, I um regardless of what Ainsley was doing, I would sleep through. I'd have my eight hours okay. as if we didn't have a child. Um, whereas once it became my task to get up instead of Ainsley, um, I then, like, she would literally wake me up and say, cool, go go sort the shit out. Um, <laughs> literally. literally? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, yeah. What a high five, um, man. Would you say you have a, you know, a regular bedtime routine? Yes. Yeah, I, I wake up consistently at five or six depending on what I've got for that day and I'll therefore go to bed at nine or ten to make sure I've kind of and it'll sometimes I go to bed a little bit later but um almost never will I be asleep past like 10 30. I mean it's, it's the most most in- crucial point of, uh, of, of of trying to get to sleep is actually having a, a, a routine of when you go to bed and when you get up yeah. Yeah. The, the way the body works is it produces a chemical melatonin which is what causes, starts to cause you drowsy affected by the sun and the temperature it's mainly by the sun um, but also dimming the, the temperature in your bedroom your body has to drop by one, one degree celsius to actually be able to initiate sleep that's what the bears do <laughs> it's, what the bears do. It's, why, it's why animals hibernate sorry say that again your body actually has to your, drop your, body, your core temperature of your body has to drop by one, one degree celsius two to three degrees fahrenheit to, to be able to actually Initiate sleep. Wow. Oh, wow. That yeah. happened real quick, but Never, he's got no body fat on him. Never knew that. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah. That's, is that why they use those like co- cooling blankets and things that you can actually? I've seen them in place where to try and drop your core temperature down quickly. I've seen people that struggle to get to sleep. I'm not one of them. If I'm ready to go to sleep, I'm, I'm asleep but straight away. But like you can actually speed that process up, and I guess that's because it's trying to drop the. Yeah, please degree. talk to the microphone, Matt Hannum. Yeah, so a very, a very good, uh, no, a very good tip is, is if you want to to be able to drop your body temperature by one degrees, is actually have a warm shower for for ten minutes, and then go go back out, dry yourself quickly, and get into bed. That change in temperature is what actually causes. Because yeah, the heat externally it. drops you internally, right? That's the one. Yeah, yeah that's why it works. Yeah. Wow. Or See, drinking a warm glass of milk does the same thing. <laughs> or so, I know all the tricks, mate. Just don't fucking use them. <laughs> <laughs> but back to Jacob, I know the, the, the bedtime routine, you've, you've got that in place. Uh, what, yeah. Yeah, we, we set the challenge today with, with uh, getting off your phone, and I know you mentioned that you wanted to switch that over to books. How's that come for you? Um, <laughs> not, <laughs> not very good by the sounds of it. <laughs> Jacob was just asleep, just, he was just walking. <laughs> <laughs> um, the technology one I found tricky because I, I do tend to spend the last hour of my day, whether it be laying in bed, checking out Instagram or Facebook or kind of consuming and usually on my screen, whether I'm watching TV or I'm on my phone or both. Um, it's always consumed by like screens. Whereas the recently I'd kind of go, cool, once kind of TV was finished, I'd go into the bedroom and I'd read for an hour or so. Um, and similarly, I set my alarms beforehand, so I kind of 
went and plugged my phone in an hour at least before bed. Um, and this week I've, I've had to wake up a couple of times during the night so the quality does get impacted, but I haven't felt noticeably tired. I've been sick. Well, we noticed you tired yesterday morning. <laughs> yeah. Would you, um, say you're, would you say you're a morning person? Yes. More so than an evening person, that's for sure. Like there, I've, there is a bit of a, a genetic uh, link in there between people. There are people who are actually morning people and there are people who are evening I, people. I've always been out of function I, for the last three to four years as a strength coach and a PT. I've been able to be at work at 6 a.m., which is traditionally earlier than a lot of people, um, without coffee and fully functioning. Whereas a lot of people who edit video at night time or, or work till 11, 12, kind of 1 a.m., I can't do that. I'll fall asleep by 8 or 9. I just don't function at night. Kind of once it's dark, my body goes, cool, sleep time. Yeah. Evolutionary, there's a reason for that. And that's because if you think about it, when we were, if we were to be, you know, be cavemen, eight hours being asleep together is a very vulnerable, a long time to be vulnerable to... To, to, to wild animals yeah. so what they would have is they would usually have people that would sleep earlier and people that would sleep later so to shorten that time that were vulnerable yeah. and it would often <coughs> it would often be the males that would stay up later and the females that would get up earlier so you, yeah, okay. you do tend to find that females generally, generally are more morning people like in a, in a feminine. not my mother-in-law <laughs> <laughs> she can knock it up before 9am and if it's in the eight, she's very disappointed. Mate, so mate, do not be starting war with the in-laws, mate. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just. Uh, My mum. Just. Uh, My mum-in-law. This is Conrad. I'm not angry with you. <laughs> I'm not angry. It's just pointing out that, uh, yeah, definitely uh, the the female side of my. Wife's side. Uh, <laughs> don't don't try to dig yourself a hole here. No, they're they're evening people, not morning people. So what about you, Hado? I'm a morning person and an evening person. Oh, what about what about lunchtime? Uh, I'm You're just a sleeping person. I'm just a happy person. I'm a smile person. No, uh, I'm I'm definitely a morning person. I bounce out of bed. I'm ready to go. Uh, but saying that, I don't drink coffee, uh, and I really I'm really quite I'm quite strict with my diet. So my my energy levels stay very similar from 6 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night. Um, you know, obviously tailing off towards the end of the night. But um, you know, if need be, I'm generally pretty pretty leveled uh, and that's kind of the way I like it sounds like you got it nailed yeah it's pretty like uh, you know, you, yeah just well, you, like, for me diet diet is a big thing and, and food uh, food obviously food is a big thing and um, sleep so getting enough sleep um, like I was saying about that six and a half to seven hours is perfect for me um, and not having too much sugar Mm. Sugar is a killer, and uh, you know, not having too many things that turn into sugar. So you know, your big breads and your pastas and stuff, because obviously, when you digest that, that turns into into glucose and sugar within your in your body. Uh, so it's eating regularly, eating the right stuff uh, throughout the day, and plenty of water. Yeah, you, you do those three things. And I think your energy levels throughout the day kind of kind of stay the same. Like yesterday, I didn't. I missed lunch, and by five o'clock, six o'clock, I had to go train for basketball, and I was I couldn't function. Because I hadn't eaten. Have you? Have you? Is this through educated, or is this through just finding out through your own body? Uh, it's it's reading. Um, it's it's yeah. It's like I read a lot about Novak Djokovic, um, the way he kind of trains and that sort of stuff. And Andrew Bogut, he's an Australian basketballer, plays in the NBA, and he was close to retiring. Then he cut all sugar out of his diet, and it pretty much changed his his. Um, his career. I have a lot of inflammation injuries, uh, so I had tendonitis in my knees and you know, anything to do with uh, inflammation, I'd probably ha generally have it. Uh, so that kind of prompted me to do a bit of reading on how to get rid of that. Um, so that kind of started me off on the journey of the diet. You're not diet. vegan, but are you? No, I'm not vegan. Novak, jo <laughs> Novak Djokovic is vegan. Uh, I'd, I'd you know, I think just everything in moderation. It's not that I don't have sugar, but it, you know, I don't binge on it. Um, yeah, so it, it's a little bit of sort of self finding out, but also just having conversations with people too. Definitely, and, and having energy levels during the day. It's not just down to sleep; it is down to you know, diet, exercise. Mm. What about you, Mike? I'm about a seven and a half to eight. I reckon I'm probably seven, seven and a half. Let's go seven and a half. Like yeah. eleven. What, what did the app say, Mike? 
Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, about seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that. But yeah, eleven o'clock latest, six a.m. up. Usually probably coming out of sleep about half five. And, um, where and I'll get up. I'm pretty good at, in the morning getting up straight away. So that's my. I can without an alarm clock be up by six a.m. easy. Um, I can't sleep in. I can't sleep in. I don't know. I just don't, doesn't work. And Joanne as well. We're the same. We're well, up and they, su- they suggest that you shouldn't really. That you, yeah. As soon as you're awake. Don't spend more than 20 minutes. Oh, it's beautiful, minutes. man. It's so good to get outside, take the dogs a walk, the sun comes up. It's, it's the life, man. That's what it's about. So, um, you'll have a lot of people who disagree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think about that. I think about I'm up at 6 a.m. and then at 11 o'clock, I'm on, like, on a Saturday or whatever, looking at have done like this, 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 and this. I'm thinking, shit, there's still people that are still even thinking about getting out of bed. It's sort of, so to me, that's a foreign sort of thing. Now, even my kids are up. You know, Emma's probably the one that would sleep in the most, but um, I no sorry, Sam is the one that would sleep in the most. He's he could during the school holidays be in bed till like but eleven, twelve. Teenagers need more sleep, yeah, don't they? They do. Yeah, they, yeah. Physiologically, oh, don't feed that beast. No, it's it's, it's true. It is it's true. Yeah, it's generally, yeah. teenagers because they're going through a rapid changes in their body, they need more deep sleep. Well, he grows like in the school holidays, say over the summer school holidays, within that sort of eight weeks, seven eight weeks. He will be sleeping in every day till about 11, 12. And he literally grows <laughs> like eight centimetres during that time. It's within that, that, that deep wave sleep that you get, you get huge rises in, in, in growth hormone. Yep. And, that, yep. and that's, they need that. Do you want to grow taller, Conrad? <laughs> I'd love to grow taller. But, you know, you talk about early mornings, right? Yeah. I, I tell you a little, little mind game I used to play with myself. I don't anymore because I'm not feeling that special. But when I used to get up and go for a walk or a very long time ago, I actually went for a jog. Um, Just but one I, joke. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, the, the, the mental story I used to tell myself is that I'm the first person breathing this air, and it used to make me feel good. And it really fucking pissed me off when I saw some of the fucker Stop out there early in Stop, Stop. I said, I'm, I'm the one here, not you. But that's what I used to do. I think, it's your morning, isn't it? I love it. Yeah, I used to love doing that. I don't do it anymore because I go to the gym these days, but going out for a walk and getting the fresh air was phenomenal. Yeah. Um, pretty, oh, pretty righteous of me to yeah. think that I'm the only one fucking I mean, breathing at time of the morning, though. The Tim Ferriss interview with I think Rick Rubin, I think it is, who gets up and just gets the sunlight straight out, you know, naked, walks out and just has the sunlight on him and that's him just up for the day. So it's what we're meant to be. <laughs> but doesn't Rick Rubin? I mean he was he was oh, an all nighter, right? So him getting up early is like nine AM. Yeah, yeah, but he, he had to rebuild his his entire wet day and week structure. Oh definitely from what, from what he used to do, yeah. But the the flip yeah. of that is that I love the night because I've got I've got my dad's old telescope and I I love stargazing and gazing at the moon particularly when it's a full moon I'll drink a scotch I'll smoke a cigar and I'll stare at the fucking moon and think <laughs> and think of how the Americans didn't land on the fucking thing <laughs> then you find yourself in a ditch somewhere <laughs> waking up <laughs> and I'm thinking oh shit these three hours I've got to go sleep now so <laughs> it's one of the most beautiful things that I've found that, uh, moving to Australia is is the night sky oh man yeah yeah, yeah. it's amazing mm. you just go a couple hours the out possibilities. Of Hey, um, just a question. Sorry, I knew you were about to say something, but um, <laughs> yeah, just, just to keep right. you quiet a bit longer. I, long bet, you, I <laughs> bet you to it. Um, is is the statement true that the older you get, the less sleep you need? Yeah. Why? Why yeah, is 46. that? What's, what's the there you what's go. the <laughs> what's the evolutional? It's it's not it's not really evolutionary. It's just down to the fact that yeah, physiological is is the older you get, is the the less your body needs to repair, the less your your, your mind is being. So because it's dying. <laughs> entropy. In, 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 in it's way. entropy, mate. Let's well, use a proper word. Well, We're not supposed to mention death on this show anymore. Well, don't you get to a certain age and then your cells just start to yeah, deteriorate? So, so, yeah. So cell regeneration it does reduce as you age. Um, so they, they generally, elderly people would need more like six to seven hours. Yeah. So, there you go, Conrad. Right? <laughs> I've passed elderly. <laughs> when you're 70, you'll be sleeping for like 10 seconds. Right? I mean, <laughs> if I get to 70, I haven't lived hard enough. Our elderly people, so that's, yeah, you're looking at the 60 range. How old are you? 46. 46. Um, I look good for my age, though. You do, you do. You look amazing. Yeah. But fishing for golf. <laughs> reducing your sleep duration to below six hours per night can actually give you the testosterone levels of someone who's 10 years senior than you. 
Ooh. Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. Ooh. So, so you'll have, oh, yeah, you have smaller testicles than most of us, but... This might, this might sway <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's going to get reused, that joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to put them on the table and measure right now. <laughs> Go on, then. Anyone want to have a crack? I want to do what someone else does. The cameras have left. <laughs> this is balls. The cameras have left, we'll bring them back. Let's balls. play that game. Don't <laughs> break <laughs> the table like you did the chair, please. <laughs> let's not do that. Adam, sure. let's go. Let's go with what? Let's first measure our testicles. Jesus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought we moved on. Um, okay. Sorry, Matt, what, what were you going to say before? <laughs> no, I, was, I just wanted to tie it back to performance. Um, a couple of reasons. So just, just reflecting on my week, and I, I tracked my sleep uh, in the app that you asked us to do this week. I cut out caffeine for the week. I had a coffee this afternoon. Um, Conrad had English breakfast all week. But no, no <laughs> Six irrelevant. Six coffees today. But I, I didn't have – I had a particularly – well, not, not quite a usual week um, in that um, I trained quite hard one night, um, late at night, and then I, I woke up in the morning and noticed I still had a, a higher heart rate than the rest of the week. So that was one thing that had happened and I had, my body was recovering. But the other thing that happened, and I'm interested in the general um, thoughts around performance, is I had about three and a half. Can we just four, define performance? What are you talking about work performance? I'm talking about work in, in our vocation performance. So, okay. so performance in the life over the week. I, I had about a four hour sleep one night and that Rock came off the, the yeah no I, look and I do this from time to time so what, what I, I average six hours right what I notice is I'll I'll do a three to four hour here and there when I'm working on something I'll recover with a seven hour sleep at some point but there's always an extra hour or two that, that say gets missed out but the reason why and I'll only do that is when I'm 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 deep in some work and I'm getting a lot done, so in I won't stop. Flow. I'm in the flow, so I won't stop. And that particular night, it won't often often happen about eight or nine because I usually work till about six or so. Um, usually go home, see the family, and then I'll jump back on. If I'm feeling it, I'll get a fair bit done. If I'm not feeling it, I won't. That particular night, if I push through and I'm working into sort of nine nine thirty, and I'm actually doing something, I maybe once every three to four weeks, I'll hit like a flow and I'll work from nine till almost three and have probably done what I might do in two to three days in the office. So that, uh, in my view, it's worth it. Keep going. I'm in this flow. Just attack it while I'm there. There's no one bothering me. No one's awake. No one's emailing me if they're in the same country and I'll just go for it. And I, and I achieved an awful lot. The, the day thereafter, I slept an extra hour. Yeah, I'm not too worried about that and I'm more or less back into my normal flow from there but I'm, I'm curious on what people's thoughts are around their performance in their their business or whatever they you know whatever we do with our time that our vocation and and whether or not you like where do you put sleep like obviously Jacob it sounds like you put sleep as a, high, a really high priority even with distractions small aside and everything else you'll try and make sure you achieve that number otherwise you feel like you don't function but who else you know, notices these things in their work and does anyone do that where they, they hit their flow and they just go for it? It doesn't matter what time it is. You just didn't, don't bother to look. I'm in flow every day. Oh, mate. <laughs> every day. <laughs> there's, there's the most no answer to that. Like, yeah. like honestly. Fuck man, I'm living like, the, 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 but No, but really. Like, like, you sleep? I don't. Well, okay, this, this is a really interesting. Remember the, there was a podcast with Joe Rogan and the sleep um, neuroscience, whatever, that can't remember. Uh, Matthew Walker, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Everybody go check that out, by the way. Absolutely amazing. You Put it in the show notes. You haven't watched it yet. No, I told it's you to watch shit. it. No, I, no, <laughs> no, listen, no so, just, I was going to say, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan were two people that had the yep. biggest sleep badges in the world. Yep. I do not sleep. I work, work, work. Yep. Both had early onset Alzheimer's. Right. And they, well, and, and they, they do equate it to that lack of sleep that they had. For I'm that. not denying the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So if I get early onset Alzheimer's, hopefully I've achieved enough for somebody to take care of me. And you know what? I, I wouldn't give a fuck about it anyway. Because I wouldn't know about it. Is that true though, Martin? Is there, is there yeah, so connections with... It's to do with information in the body. The, the less sleep you have or the poorer sleep quality you have, it basically increases the amount of stress. Stress is the same as lack of sleep. Sure. So you get an increase in cortisol. You get an increase in, in okay. inf inflammatory markers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can cause impacts on the... Yeah, and I've got psoriasis, and I've had it for... And I've been treated yeah. for it for the last 10 years. So yeah. Actually, since you've been wearing the yeah. mask and stuff, has your psoriasis cleaned up? It flares up from time to time, but it's, it's a... It, it's, it's, to tell you the truth, it's actually been more under control when I fast for five days. 
fasting, yep, yep. Again, that's probably because you're bringing down inflammation through fasting. Yeah. I also suffer from psoriasis as well. And uh, when I, it was summer this year, I actually tried to shorten my sleep hours to try and make myself more productive so I can get, get to the gym earlier and I could still work in the evenings. And I found that I flared up quite a bit. I then extended my sleep hours to go back and my psoriasis cleared up. So you say extended your sleep hours. So what are you sleeping? Did you say that? So I, I, so I, I sleep roughly, I, I go for the eight hours. So I aim for the eight hours. All right. But I, I do have poor sleep quality. Okay. But I have... Is I, that because of, you know, you, do you not wear a mask? Do you have apnea or what? No, I don't, I, don't have, I don't have a sleep apnea or anything. Um, I think I, I went through a, a significant phase of having a, you know, a bit of anxiety. And yep. uh, my... my Self-love fix that. Yeah. <laughs> could, could be, yeah. Big changes hey, moving. Not the same. <laughs> Big changes oh, moving really? over to Australia. Huh? Um, and a few things happened and that, that impacted my quality of sleep. But also, I train at the gym very hard in the evenings. And I don't allow, my, my body doesn't really allow it. I don't give myself time to settle down before I go to bed. So sometimes I'm jumping straight into bed and my legs are twitching and, mm-hmm. and you know, I, I'm, I'm struggling to fall asleep or I find myself waking up every hour. But in fact, doing this and cutting out caffeine myself this week, I've, I've actually found myself sleeping much better. So you say leg twitching, or yeah, I've heard about that. Yep. Magnesium? Yeah, so there's a there's, there's periodic limb movement disorder, which is basically every couple of uh, every couple of minutes, uh, four or four to five seconds, you get little twitches in your in your in your toes or your feet, and that can just be enough just to arouse you out, out of your sleep, uh, your, yeah, out, out of your sleep into wakefulness. And for some people, it can cause an issue, and it is uh, a strenuous workout is, is a, one of the, one of the risk factors for that. Yeah. The way magnesium works is it actually allows your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the nervous system that slows down, it activates that more. We're in a, we're in a society where we're constantly on the go, it's 24 seven, we're trying to work harder, stress levels are high, sugar levels are high. The sympathetic nervous system is being overstimulated mm. and that is causing things like you know, inflammation, causing you know, heart disease, causing strokes. And the, the statistics on it are overwhelming. It really is. Mm. The caffeine thing is interesting because this week I cut out. I'm a one or two cups of coffee, but I love my coffee. But you were shitty yesterday. Was I? I don't think it was. No, but you yeah, wanted probably. a coffee. Hey, <laughs> you wanted a coffee. Yeah, I did want a coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. I we did dry July. Myself and Martin did dry July last. You lost. And July. you lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I you gave a pineapple. Yeah, yeah. That was because the podcast and had a beer afterwards, and it just it went all downhill from there. But um. I found it harder getting off the caffeine than I did stopping drinking alcohol. Just because during the work day, I did feel it. I had but it's a habit. It's more the habit than it is the caffeine. caffeine I, I mean, caffeine actually does is an enhancer, yeah? Yeah. So If you're not, I mean, five cups or six cups a day. But if you're having one or two, like before a meeting or whatever, it does enhance your... But it's social. It's no, it's no more different than having a beer after work to have a, a catch-up with the mate. Let's go for a beer after work. It becomes a social, accept, a socially acceptable no, no, habit. It's not social for me because I just like my coffee by myself before work have my coffee it's not so you don't do it with anyone no. you just drink it by yourself yeah 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 so I'm with you Conrad like that's it's more about like I didn't yeah, I know no, hang on hang on hang on we've just did, had an earth shattering moment holy shit <laughs> did you just say you agree I, with Conrad I usually do my best to try and find a way to disagree with Conrad <laughs> that's <laughs> the end of the podcast stop <laughs> <laughs> the end of the whole fucking series <laughs> but I, sorry go on sorry sorry I, I'm not sure that I necessarily. I mean, obviously, you, I'd be I'd be addicted to caffeine in a way, but I it, for me it, it's more the the experience of it and the and the social aspect of sharing that in, in different situations than it is. I have to have that coffee by yeah. myself. Like that, I don't. That, I don't I, go out just to have it by myself. I just I like that coffee I in the morning. I don't, I don't have to have that else. coffee in the morning necessarily, yeah. unless I'm having that first meeting it becomes a coffee meeting or whatever that looks like I, I can all of a sudden oh I haven't had a coffee today I'll go get my first one at 2.30 like it, it doesn't yeah now I'm a like coffee it, in, in, yeah. when I go into work got my coffee I'm more a protein shake guy these days does yeah. does that not concern you to be um fuck I had it in my head I'm now <laughs> yeah yeah like um like you're relying on something or you're, you're not, I don't want to use the word addicted, but you need it's it to function or you need it, you know, like, I need to have my coffee in the morning because the amount of people you speak to the and they're like, right? yeah, exactly. You, the amount of people you speak to, oh, don't talk to me, I haven't had my coffee in the morning. It's like, no, I'm what the fuck? Fuck? I'm not like that. I'm not Precious like that. I just fucks. like my coffee in the morning. I mean, this week I've been fine. I've been working okay yeah. whatever. Because it's a mindset thing because like you're so reliant on that to engage your happy 
you know, happiness for the morning or, you know, you, to... You needed to get work done. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a story. Yeah. It's all a fucking story, yeah. man. Change the story. Yeah, so I know that's that's one reason why I don't, Suck a marshmallow. I don't have coffee. Personally. I mean, there's, yeah, life is a story. Yeah. So you're telling yourself a story and you're convincing yourself. I'm telling but, myself a story right now. <laughs> but the, the way that the caffeine works, in, in terms of alertness, is it blocks a chemical called adenosine. Which, Ad- what? Adenosine. Adenosine. Which is what makes us feel tired. But what, when they block that from the brain, it allows the brain to, to be a bit more excited, to send those neurons that are basically going to lift us up. So we feel a bit more energetic. But it also... Is it significant, though? Because yeah. it doesn't stop me from sleeping. Same, same. I can have a coffee after dinner. How long have you been drinking it for? Right. I'm 46, probably since I was six. <laughs> <laughs> so you develop a, to- a so tolerance. You, yeah, a so, so with caffeine, you do. So... It's the, the other way that caffeine works is it actually does stop it, it inhibits dopamine or, or slows down the release of the dopamine from the brain back into the body but that's so, okay I don't like dopamine so it does give you a high so it is in a form coffee is instant gratification yeah you don't like dopamine I don't think so <laughs> <laughs> mate it's trying to cut you're, one of the, you're one of the first people to respond to anything that happens online move along <laughs> <laughs> you know, I value you I, I value value Giving value. Oh, I know. Sorry. I just had to, like, find a way to disagree with you quickly. No, just agree with me, man. All right, move Shut it up. Jacob, what were you saying? I was saying, like, you're similar to me and you don't drink coffee. Are you, do you find you're quite sensitive in the... Old- <laughs> <laughs> you're too sensitive, <laughs> guys. Oh, the snags in the Jacob, corner. Jacob, I love you. I get that. I get that. Um, on my wedding night, I had four espresso martinis. It was noticeable. Ooh, and yeah. um, really? that... It was noticeable. You're like an ant. I was more... <laughs> did you go all night? <laughs> I sure did, buddy. I sure did. Uh, no, I was, I was. Yeah, it just puts you through the roof. Personally, yeah. I, had, I like every now and then I'm like, oh, I feel like a, a mocker, yeah. or I feel like a. Um, you feeling like nasty when you're doing that to yourself? Cool, yeah. I have a mock. Yeah. They're dirty my body up. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I feel it like I can kind of go what's yeah. that like, tingle I've got <laughs> Man. what's that feeling oh my god <laughs> the innocence the innocence of fucking you two yeah hey but you know I still love the but, joke when we go to the cafe, ca- uh, cafe shops and Travis and I then he doesn't order a coffee so he's not old enough mate it doesn't I, it, still, it, I still use it and the waitresses just love it mate well, you right. think they love it, but they yeah. just like get me out of here. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so, so we probably haven't got a lot of time left, but I just wanted to. What do you mean, mate? You feeling tired? <laughs> <laughs> we can run. If you want to run through these numbers, I don't. I don't fall asleep very like like that. I fall asleep when I go to bed. I don't fall asleep in a, a series of... Good place to do it. Yeah, I don't fall asleep <laughs> while driving. Um, anyway, it's just for the, benefit, narcolepsy. for the benefit of everyone listening, we've just done a quick worksheet with Martin around how, how and when we fall asleep. And, and we can put this worksheet like. up if people want to use it. I don't know who they're going to talk about it with. Yeah. Maybe reach out to Martin. Sure, we can... We can Martin, up. fill me up. <laughs> <laughs> I, wanted, I wanted to ask Martin, what, what are some simple hacks? Like, What are some genuine takeaways that we can, uh, or people listening, can just do to try and improve? You know, look, maybe... Maybe it's not that feasible to add an extra hour or two. Certainly, like some of us in the room, we're parents of young kids. There's often disruption. But what can we do to, you know, whether it's an easy hack, whether it's a, a, something that we can do to just improve either the quality or just a little bit more time with our sleep? The, the, the most common uh, major thing is going to be routine. Get into bed at the same time, getting up at the same time. We, our bodies just work on clocks. We work on a circadian rhythm. Make sure you're keeping that consistent. Um, dimming down your lights we're a light deprived uh, society thankfully for Edison we've got lights but naturally we should be following the sun when the sun dims down we start to feel tired and we start to drift off but now we leave the lights on until 10 o'clock at night so what I would and that's say that's where is, the devices come in I suppose yeah, where you've got that light in your yeah, face yeah, so. yeah definitely so blue light's the worst and that is, you know, your screen's right in front of your eyes that's going to promote mel- melatonin or shift it so that actually you're, you're actually no longer sleeping when you should be or feeling sleeping when you should be it's later on so that would be the best thing dimming down the lights as well so as soon as it's dark outside I pretty much just start to tone all my lights down and then before I want to go to bed I've got the TV on it's just the TV on and then try and avoid having your phone right in front of your face that would be the two main things I yeah because say. it does hit you in the face when you fall asleep <laughs> <laughs> I've got a pair of those um, pretty pretty awesome looking uh, little yellow glasses yeah. that, I, that I like to throw in from time to time <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, I want to see what? you wearing them. Hey, yeah, I'll get you some. Don't worry, I'll buy some on eBay. Sorry, uh, is that is that to get rid of the blue light? Yeah, 
But what I've noticed is even if I'm not looking at blue light, and I, I, I don't use them every night. I, I bought them probably 12 months ago. I've probably used them, oh, look, maybe 60 or 90 days throughout like throughout the year that I've that I bought them. But uh, what I notice is uh, very quickly after I'm, I've started using them a few times, and immediately I just start to just chill out a little bit. You know, I just put them on. I'm not even watching you know, TV or not even necessarily on my phone, but I actually start to slow down, relax a little bit more. Like they're pretty cool. And I, I would only wear them for maybe an hour or two before, you know, before going to sleep. And um, have you yeah, taken actually they were really cool. Have you taken up rifle shooting as well? Or I have. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I didn't, I didn't buy the special ones that flip up one eye, but um, I just bought the just find yourself $5 you know, the gun. That's probably the best line I've heard come out of Duncan. It is actually. Oh, thanks, man, for how many episodes. I hope they quote you in the blog, man. <laughs> Trying to get quite in the get some Jesus. And the interesting thing is, you do actually. That's my goal. You would expect that blind people would feel tired all the time, but it depends on their how, what's causing their blindness. And oh, if yeah. it's just the the, the retina, their eyes not working, it's, yeah. So it's just <laughs> yeah. So it's just a it's just the retina at the very front of the the eye. Mm. They actually still are controlled by light. Okay, so they're not blinded by ego. Like yeah. some people we know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me, mate. I've been that. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jacob. Come on, Jacob. Oh, I was going to say I have another question for Trav because he's the. Did you YouTube? I'm in the hot pro- seat. You two want to prop each other up? Um, Give each other a kiss. You were saying before that the the sun dictates a lot of your um, like sleepiness and sleep patterns, kind of historically, and you're the the person who camps and and spends the most time in nature. I think Hugs of trees. this group. Do you find when, and a lot of people who go camping will rise and, and go to sleep based on the sun rather than any predetermined hours. Um, have you found when you go camping, do you sleep more or less or do you feel the quality of sleep changes or? I reckon um, you sleep more going back to Martin's point about the lights when the sun goes down, obviously when you're camping or if you're traditionally camping, you're not going to have as many things to do. It's not like you're kind of sitting watching TV or you're, you get bored early, do you? Yeah, you, well, yeah, pretty much. You know, so you get bored early, you play board games or you play cards or something and then you're like, oh, well, let's go to bed. It's 9 o'clock or 8.30, nine, you know, that sort of time. And then the sun rises and if you're laying in your swag, it starts to get pretty hot straight away. <laughs> yeah, so it wakes you up. So yeah. yeah. But the Hindis, so, the Hindis do subscribe to yeah. the same philosophy, it's sundown, sun up as their yeah. sleep pattern. Yeah. yeah. But if you take people out and don't give them a clock and you put them, you know, take them out into nature, they'll start to feel tight and go to sleep at 6, 7 o'clock rather than yeah. 9, 10 o'clock. What about the seasons? Well, I, I noticed that I struggle to get up, not not because of cold, but in, in winter I notice that the body's asking me for more sleep. And I yeah, can you certainly bear get as well. a lot less than summer. Agreed, me too. It's that yeah, bear, that I, bear I, gene coming out in you. There is an evolutionary the <coughs> thing there. It's longer nights... Longer nights, so we're going to feel tired for longer. It's just, you, you got, your melatonin is going to increase earlier. So then it's also the, the sun is not rising as, as early. So there is definitely... Um, Have there been uh, studies done with the guys up in like Iceland and stuff like that, where they're sort of during the summer, obviously, it's like light all yeah, night? Yeah, I'm um, not sure, actually. It's be, pretty interesting to... They have very, very dark curtains, I would assume. <laughs> I hope so, yeah. yeah. Block out. Lots of these glasses as well. I've got, I mean, shout out to Mark, because I, when I was going through my... Um, my sleep studies and stuff. He he helped me out with my machines and and what I should get and what I shouldn't get. And I've now got a Resmed machine, so it's working. I believe my. Did you get a sponsorship for that? I'm <laughs> trying to get the show a sponsor. <laughs> Resmed, we love you, Martin. I love uh, you. Tell tell people where they can find you, or if they want to find out anything more about their sleeping pattern, or. So I'm I'm currently working for a company called Cardio Respiratory Sleep in, in WA. Um, we're we're a, we're a healthcare company that, that provides a cardiac issue um, um, services respiratory services and sleep services so you can get me there on my email martin mcfillamy <laughs> c-p-h-i-l-i-m-e-y at sleepcrs.net.au instagram or social media instagram yeah m, m underscore mcfillamy or m mcfillamy you can generally find me on most social media we'll link it up well it's great to actually have an expert on the show and for a change yeah. isn't it there's a, <laughs> a, a note over there yeah, yeah, and I have to ask people to please leave a review. If you have actually found anything interesting in this episode or previous episodes, please leave us a review. One Any, star, anything, five anything stars, at all. Whatever, <laughs> just something. And, it, and we're also taking topic requests. Definitely, yeah. It'd be interesting. We're going to have to open it up, I think, on a live show at some stage and have some, some comments. Oh, that'll be in. fun. Um, but yeah, Love's give us off. a review on iTunes, would be excellent. Thanks for coming in, Martin. 
Thank yeah, you. Thanks, man. That was really thanks. good. The whiskey enjoyed was, that. Was I really hope good. it made it met up to your expectations of, of the hearing us. No, no, I, I enjoyed so spending time with you guys. It's awesome. Excellent, guys. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again next week. Champagne. Ciao. Bye. Thank you for listening to the quality of your sleep episode. Like always, we would love your feedback, comments, likes, shares, subscribes. And we look forward to you joining us when we start our new series.